Welcome to another edition of Ask the Author. This is the Time to Rise series, and with me today is Dr. Juicy Jill Stalker. She is hailing in from Hollywood, California. Jill, it's great to have you. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Congratulations on being a contributing author to Time to Rise. This is pretty momentous. I am beyond excited, but I think you, I think you understand. <laughs> yes, I do. And I think um, what you have shared is so profound. It's so um, honest and vulnerable. I, I just can't wait for our conversation because oh, we already have so much in common and we're going through so many interesting similarities in our life. And I think a lot of people can relate to it. Um, but let's just start things off on a whole different note, because one of the things that we do have in common is that we both kind of grew up as the little Miss Goody Two Shoes, you know, following that path, trying to do everything right, you know, ticking off all the boxes. And you, you know, went to university, you graduated with honors, you went off to medical school, and you really followed that typical pattern that most people think about. You know, you get the marriage and the career and the kids. But in your own words, you said that you really found your true passion and your actual voice after all of that. So let's just kind of kick it off there, if we could. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, I could probably talk for days, as you know, about this. <laughs> Once you've like opened me up, <laughs> I can talk for days. Um, but well, that's one of the things is I was so shut down. I didn't talk for so long and I didn't share any of these things. And I actually hated public speaking and I would get super nervous. And, and now I just want to like shout from the rooftops. <laughs> <laughs> like, any chance I get talk. So Yeah, well, that was one of the things that I found really interesting because you said that when you saw, um, well, I think one of my videos where I was talking about my experience with depression, and you said, wow, a doctor who's willing to just be so open and vulnerable. Because you said that, like me, you used to just feel like you needed to be perfectly poised and put together so that your patients would see that, you know, you were credible and you had everything, you know, figured out, right? Absolutely. I actually, I, re I remember the first time I saw you on uh, a Facebook Live and it was, I think it was like in February of, of this year. Um, it seems like it's been so much longer than that. Uh, and I remember I was kind of doing my morning routine, morning coffee, trying to figure out, you know, what I'm, what I'm doing, what my dream is, what my, my passion is. And I watched you and I was just like, wow, I can't believe she's talking about this stuff. And I just, I felt like, you know, I, you had crawled into my body and, and. <laughs> So we're talking the same feelings that I had had. And I, and I even caught, you know, one of your episodes where you were crying a little bit and I never used to cry and I never was really able to, I was so shut down because I thought that was weakness. Mm. And I heard you sharing your vulnerability and what you've gone through and actually shedding some tears. I never once thought, Oh, she's weak. I thought, wow, she is super courageous to do that. And I felt like you really unlocked my own prison. And it's just been like an amazing ride. And so, I, well, I think, of course, for, for anyone who's actually watching the video interview, you would see this beautiful, blonde, gorgeous, bright eyed woman, and you would never think that she could have been shut down or locked in a prison. So maybe you should at least take us back there. I mean, what was life like for you? Here you, you know, you were a doctor, you still are a doctor, but at that time, you know, you, you're doing everything that on the outside looked right. But what was it like for you on the inside? Yeah. Uh, well, I was, the, you know, the way I had a great upbringing and, um, you know, great parents that loved me. I, great family, great education, but I was always just checking off the boxes of this is what I want to do. I knew I wanted to be a doctor and help people from early on. Mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly how that was going to look, but I just knew I wanted to help people. And so once I 
became a doctor and started doing it. I, I liked it. Um, and like I said, had family, lo absolutely love my children. Um, they're amazing. But after, actually after my last child, I did have postpartum depression. And that was something I just absolutely didn't talk about at all. I didn't realize that several of my other friends had gone through it, but they ne they just never talked about it either. Mm. And so once I started sharing, they kind of opened up. And around that same time, I started seeing patients in my own practice that I hadn't seen for a while, and they were completely transformed. They had a lot of energy. Um, they had lost weight. They just they felt better. They had the sparkle in their eye. Yeah. And I was like, what are you doing? And <laughs> I said, well, we're seeing this hormone doctor. And I thought, well, what is this stuff? Because in, in medical school, we don't, you know, we learned traditional medicine. We didn't learn anything about the newer bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Right. So I started studying that and thought, this is amazing. And I became one of my first patients um, because all my numbers looked perfect but I was tired all the time. I figured I was working full time. I had three kids. My hair was falling out. Um, and I was just kind of going through the motions of like, okay, it's supposed to be this way. Yeah. And, and uh, fortunately, I met a mentor that uh, said, no, you, you're, there's something wrong with your thyroid. <laughs> like I said, my, my numbers were perfect. And the first day that I took that thyroid medicine, I literally felt like I woke up. Yeah. And didn't realize I was in a fog until I hadn't been in a fog. And um, ever since then, I feel like that was kind of the start of my awakening. Uh, my That was kind of the missing puzzle piece. I had all these other things, but my hormones weren't optimized. And once I started doing that, it made me be able to just wake up and actually it was like this rumbling inside. I could feel like, I'm not sure I did all these things. I followed, you know, the, that path, but I think there's something else that I want to do. Wow. Yeah. Well, I want to get into that. I want to explore the, that feeling that you start to feel when you're coming back alive because, um, well, yeah, that's all the juicy stuff. But first, I, I want I want to give some context here. So when you say your numbers, so we're talking about you went to the doctors, you're getting sort of the, the hormone panel, the checkup. And I know that definitely when I graduated from medical school, you know, we kind of look at the numbers in a book or on the computer, and it's basically a bell curve distribution, right? Like people are generally feeling okay if their numbers are in a certain range. But now what we're learning with age management medicine is you might be what's considered low normal, but you the way it feels inside is like completely out of whack. And so those those symptoms that you were talking about, like the fatigue and the weight gain and just kind of feeling like life was flatlined, it was was um, thyroid the only hormone that you needed just a little tweak of? No, that was just the beginning. The next <laughs> one was testosterone, and that <laughs> that is a game changer for it, for myself and for women in general. I would love it if you'd share some some insights on that because I think a lot of women think, oh no, testosterone that's only for for men or it's for those women who want to bulk up. But the reality is, like we women, we need testosterone. Our bodies actually naturally make testosterone. And as it starts to wane as we get into our 30s and 40s, some of us are more sensitive to it. So talk to me about testosterone in women. Absolutely. Um, and it, it, it does obviously affect sex drive, sexual function. Yeah. Um, which is great. And that was one of the reasons that I went on it is because I didn't have any sex drive. But... I noticed once I got on it, my confidence level uh, went up, mm. my, just my overall sense of well-being. I, I literally just kept waking up more and more with each addition. And um, it, you know, the results at the gym, I was you know, running and lifting weights, but not necessarily having the same muscle tone. Um, and that significantly changed within like one to two weeks. I noticed a difference because when we don't have testosterone, we actually start getting that little muffin top, and <laughs> which we so love. Uh, oh, right. I just love, love, love <laughs> to see a little bulge roll over no, my jeans. Just, yeah. And it just, I guess it gives you that um, overall sense of well-being and, and feel like you're woken up. And I, that was the other thing. I never really talked to when 
in medical school, when we talk about erectile dysfunction or sexual function, we're not really taught how to talk to people about it. And when we do, we lower our voice. Exactly. Actually, it's embarrassing. And now I'm like, so how's your orgasm? Is Are you able to get there quickly? And, and there's always kind of that little pause. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Should we really talk about this? Because I found that, and I never would have talked about that stuff before. But now I feel like there's no shame in it. There's it's it's part of your health. It's part of your well being. And the more comfortable I am talking about it with people, and the more excited I am about it, the more it gives them permission to talk yeah. about it. Similar to when you were talking about your depression and challenges and everything, it sharing all of that just gives people permission to talk about it. And, you know, one of my things is I help women and men, because I actually see men too, um, reclaim their juiciness. Yes. And it's funny because people at first, haha, juiciness, you know, because it's, an overall different meaning um, can have multiple meanings, but I have mostly women that that will use the word. Once I get them optimized, they kind of get a little bit of a sparkle in their eye, and they're mm -hmm. like, "Talk to Jill. I'm kind of feeling juicy," and it's so exciting to see that. Um, and so that's where testosterone can really be a game changer uh, for women. Yeah, that you know, I had the exact same experience when I got trained in age management medicine, you know, going through the training and all of that, it was like, oh, okay. When we think of anti-aging, we think of like the brain, like we don't want to get Alzheimer's, we don't want cancer and diabetes or heart disease. But if you really think about, if you were optimizing, you want to maintain your health span, your overall vitality. And of course you want that in the bedroom or, you know, on the kitchen table or wherever you, you get your groove on. <laughs> But that was the, that was a shift for me as well, because going through that training and certification, it was like, oh, OK, now we're having these conversations about intimacy that I never had before. And, you know, inviting people to open up like, OK, everything else is, is looking good. How are things down there? How are things between you and your partner? And it was it was it was a game changer um, because then I was able to say, OK, if you're not feeling sexual, if you're not feeling that sense of arousal or desire or that juiciness or the ability to experience orgasm, then we need to talk about that. We need to look at, yes, the hormones, but other interpersonal aspects. So I hear you. Once you start having the conversation, it sets people free and it's totally natural. Like we're meant to enjoy a, a vibrant sex life all the way into our seventh or eighth decade of life. Absolutely. So what led you then? So you were, you were doing um, family practice, right? And then you got your certification as well. You went through this training in age management medicine. And because once your lights were turned on, I guess you wanted to turn on everybody else's lights, yeah? Absolutely, absolutely. I just, I will be your biggest cheerleader if you're involved, if you're, you know, it's a team effort. And I, I was finding that with traditional family practice, it just was, it was not there. People didn't really have um, the desire um, to, to get better. And, and I still wanted to help them, um, but I felt like it was kind of, my energy was not going in the right direction. And it's actually, today is one year to the day that I closed my practice. Uh, wow. I that door on kind of the old traditional practice and took the leap into only this this type of practice and it's just been amazing and it's not just the the go ahead it's not just what it's not just the you know the hormonal changes it's i i have that really helped to awaken me to all sorts of possibilities of of what i do and um i think i had talked to you before about i felt that once i started having this rumbling and awakening when I was talking this old script to patients and not really sharing myself, it mm. didn't feel like me and it didn't feel comfortable. Well, that's exactly where I would love to pick it up because this journey that you're on, I, I've had the, the pleasure of watching it unfold and watching you blossom over the last, I don't know, six months or so. So when we get back from the break, I'd love to hear about where those rumblings have taken you since. And yeah, I think people might be surprised. 
So when we get back, let's pick it up there. Okay, thank you. Tune in daily to get fired up with insight and inspiration for purposeful living, conscious relationships, and soulful success. You're watching Liberate Your Authentic Self with me, Dr. Andrea Pennington. Check out the live version of this show where I answer your questions in real time. Visit facebook.com forward slash Dr. Andrea Pennington. You're watching Liberate Your Authentic Self with me, Dr. Andrea Pennington. Check me out on Instagram at Dr. Andrea Pennington. And now back to the show. So what happens when you follow the script? You've done everything that society and your family tells you is the right thing to do. And you wake up starting to have these little rumblings, these tinglings that are telling you that there's probably more to your life than what you're seeing. Well, my guest, Dr. Juicy Jill Stalker, she is a contributing author in this book, Time to Rise. And Jill, thank you so much for sharing so openly about your experience waking up. Now, I've said this before, if we just look at you, you look bright and bubbly and you look fully awakened. But this has actually been a process for you of learning to be vulnerable with your patients, with your family, with us on you know social media. So talk to me a little bit about the rumblings that you started to feel even in your medical practice. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, I just, I kind of want to back up just a little bit when you, you keep mentioning this, this light in, in your eyes. I actually had a really good friend of mine a couple years ago when I was going through that, that process, uh, mentioned to me, I, I see sadness in your eyes. Everything looked fine. Everything looked perfect. Nobody knew anything that was going on but I had sadness there. And that was part of the, the awakening, like, oh, somebody really sees me. Yeah. And so that's now actually one of the things that I talk to my clients about is like, what is your, what is your dream? What is your passion? I want to get that, you know, and, and it's not the typical doctor question, People are like, what's your, you know, past medical history? What surgeries? And when somebody comes to see me, I say, tell me your story. And I find out, I get all the information I need. But then I ask them, what is your dream? Because when I first made the transition to close the practice in traditional medicine and just go all in <laughs> in this direction, I was super excited about it, but I also was kind of in survival mode of just getting, you know, checking the boxes, getting everything squared away, moving. And I just remember thinking to myself, what is my dream? And I, I actually didn't even know my dream. And that was a year ago that I, I didn't know. And that's when I was getting the rumblings. I knew I was headed in the right direction. So I um, came to Southern California and um, joined the practice and have been doing that. And, and then I had a little bit of quiet time um, because you have to build up your practice. And with that quiet time, I used it to really dive into meditation, hot yoga, really getting to know myself, uh, which is uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. uncomfortable. Um, but that was where I began to see this is what I'm meant to do. And I started sharing my experiences with my clients, like little by little, because I didn't want to, when I first started uh, as a doctor, I was 25 and a female and not taken very seriously. So to share any part of myself, personal part, like with the depression or even the postpartum depression, I would, I felt like I would just not have any credibility then. And I found little by little when I would share little parts of that it actually, I would see my patient's eyes light up, like, oh, she gets it. And so then I, I would share my own story with, you know, I wasn't feeling good. I felt dead inside. Uh, but everything looked great, um, but my hair was falling out. I was tired. I didn't feel alive. And by sharing that, like I said, it helps to bring the little the spark behind their eyes because they, they have the me too factor of I'm not alone. 
And then, you know, I don't have a traditional path for each client. I find out what what's your dream? What do you want to do? Even, you know, I have women, I had a woman a couple weeks ago, she's 64 years old. And her thing is, is it too late? Am I too old? Wow. To be here? No, absolutely not. I'm so glad that you came here. And in sharing that I had just traveled, you know, to another country alone, she as she was leaving, was planning to book a trip by herself to Croatia. She's like, I've always wanted to do that. So, Isn't that amazing that just sharing our vulnerability without any agenda, just saying, look, I'm human too. I've got my stuff. You're able to actually help set other people free. I just mm -hmm. love that. Yeah, and my stuff is still unfolding. I think it's always <laughs> going to be unfolding, I think. <laughs> but... Yeah, but, uh, but I, I I can see the difference in my in looking at my pictures, um, like my professional pictures. They look pretty, yeah, but it's yeah. it's not me behind there. No. When you see the little sparkle, we got we have to have a little conversation here because it's not just your professional pictures. <laughs> 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 no, it's not only, you know, your professional pictures, but even what I've seen on social media. And then, yes, when you flew here to the south of France and I met you in person, I got to see you unveil and reveal even more of your juicy personality. It's There's a serious transformation going on where you are just vibrant and you look great, you feel great. But what I what I pick up is that you feel at ease. And, and that's a very stark contrast to what you described, you know, your life was before with feeling dead inside and just going through the motions. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I, you know, truly have ditched any plan. Uh, even day to day, I have kind of a rough outline of, of what I want to get done, but I am not attached to how that's going to get done, how it's going to happen, because I find that you know, I, I lived my life according to that and ended up not necessarily happy and fulfilled. And when I do this, you open the door to be truly amazed at the possibilities. There's things that I, I never thought that I was going to be writing a book, uh, flying over to Europe, speaking. Um, and now I've done that and it's such an amazing feeling and it's like I'm discovering myself and my, my true self that's kind of gotten covered with academia and, you know, um, society standards and everything. Yeah. So, and even, even last night I went to uh, a dinner where it was a traditional medical doctor speaking and I talked to him afterwards about some of the non-traditional things. And he was excited about that. But I, I found myself kind of telling him my background, um, which is, you know, I look like this, but I also have a degree in molecular and cellular biology. <laughs> and I worked in a rat lab in college doing intrathecal injections of manganese to do a thesis on manganese toxicity uh and how it mimics parkinsonism that i am not a rat person <laughs> i am a person <laughs> but <laughs> but you know that's part of my story and so and you own it and then mm -hmm. and then but i love also that you you're no longer being defined or held back by it. And I think that's the power of sharing our story, whether it's writing it, blogging about it, being on stage, um, or hosting a podcast. It's just when you own the story, then you recognize that you really are the author of it. It's like your perception of who you are or what happened to you. You get to choose that. Like, I think we we reactively think, oh, I'm such a loser or I'm not you know, whatever, when we are compared to other people. But when we just start to take that ownership, then it's like what you said, there's so many possibilities. Like I can really write my story and do whatever I want to do, even the things that I thought I would never do. Mm -hmm. And it's all perfect. Even when it doesn't feel perfect, when it doesn't feel good, sometimes those not good feelings are actually when you are having the most growth, the most personal growth. And for me, 
I would rather, and I know for you too, um, I would rather feel uncomfortable and emotionally alive yeah. than completely numb and dead inside. So what's next for you? So, you, you know, I remember before you decided to join this book project, Time to Rise, you said, oh, I don't know. If I start sharing my story, I may never stop. And I sense that this is only the beginning for you, you know? What, what's next for you? What do you really want to do? What's your dream? I'm living it. Yay! <laughs> I'm having this interview with you. Um, I just, I want to keep growing and expanding and, and I don't want to lose that contact with my, with my patients. I really think that's a key part. I like having that one-on-one -on -one and I'm very interactive with them. I actually text them. Like if I see something that's motivational, um, you know, I, I can, and they love it ever since I have come into alignment mm -hmm. and have been sharing that with my clients. It's, it, it's not just the hormone piece. The hormone piece is important, but it's, you know, when I talk to them about, I really want to help with your spiritual, mental, emotional, and sexual health. When you say sexual, they're like, ears are up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they have been doing so much better. So I, I just want to continue doing more, um, awareness speaking. I want to do a Ted talk and uh, just get the message out that it's not about just kind of getting through life and going through the changes and ticking off the boxes. It's about living it to your, to be your best self. Um, I, you know, I, I kind of want to also bridge the gap between the generations because I went through a time where my, when my mom went through the change, it just wasn't treated. It was treated with antidepressants. And she had a horrible reaction that made her want to commit suicide. Yeah. And I don't want that. And now I feel like I'm truly living my life, even if, you know, I've had all those other things, <laughs> experiences. I feel like I'm just waking up and starting to live now. And so I want to continue to spread that message that, like, even that woman that came to me and she's 64 – it's never too late. The fact that you have the awareness or that little rumbling, yeah. follow the rumbling. And, and just, you know, follow it blindly sometimes. It doesn't have to make sense because there's a lot of, you know, the other parts of my practice that I've gotten into with the meditation, with your help as well, um, I can't necessarily explain it to a T, like with medical research, but I know that it has made a difference and created a shift. And I just look at every experience that I am having as an opportunity for, for learning, for growth, and to share. Um, even those difficult experiences, I know that when I share that with other people, it's actually helping them. Mm -hmm. So I just want to continue doing more of that. Like I said, doing some speaking to, to let people know it's okay to, you know, kind of have that old life and start creating your new. I love that. I love that. Well, watching you on stage when you came to London, it was like, okay, she has found her spot. Like, that's totally you. So I love that you're, you're willing to try it. And I think that's such a beautiful message to everyone listening, that you don't have to have everything figured out. And that plan that we all thought was going to lead us to bliss, we actually get to figure it out on our way. And that's okay. I love that. Well, if anyone would like to get in contact with Dr. Juicy Jill, you can check her out online, jillstalker.com, and sign up for her newsletter. And you can stick around here as well because Jill has agreed to come back on the show um, to talk about other good goodnesses. So if you have questions, you can send me an email to drandrea at uh, americaoutloud.com and let me know what questions you have for the juicy Jill. Well, Jill, I am so excited to share this book. I can't wait for the world to read your story about bridging the gap between the generations in Time to Rise. Any last parting words? I just am so thankful for you for sharing your story and allowing me to share mine and continue the, the gift. 
Yeah, it is a gift. You are truly a gift in my life as well. So I thank you for that. I love our connection and I love seeing that you're just coming out with more and more and more. It's, it's really inspiring. So I hope everyone takes that message here that it's never too late at any point in your life to find yourself and to reinvent your life. So check out the book, Time to Rise. Check out Juicy Jill at jillstalker.com. And until next time, remember that you are a gift to the world. So share your presence with passion. Much love. Bye. How do you pick yourself up when life knocks you down? Perseverance, grit, determination, resilience. These words describe natural human qualities which help us bounce back after any type of setback. Illness, loss, betrayal, bankruptcy, divorce, abuse, and trauma. No one is immune to experiencing the tragedies of life at some point. Learning how to use your potential to rise again is what will keep you going. I'm Dr. Andrea Pennington, creator and publisher of Time to Rise. In Time to Rise, 29 inspiring changemakers share their personal stories of transformation to prove that you can reclaim your life, find your purpose, and re-emerge as the powerful creator that you are. It can be tempting to think that the people who succeed in life or who recover after major devastating loss are special or somehow endowed with magical powers. The reality is, within you are the very same powers. You have the potential to live a life of meaning and purpose in alignment with your values. You have the right and the power to reclaim wellness, live with vitality, and enjoy real happiness. Get your copy of Time to Rise and enjoy free gifts with your purchase. May this book help you reconnect to who you really are. May you find peace and hope. May you claim this moment as your time to rise. Visit timetorise.me and buy the book anywhere books are sold.